Hey, welcome to another edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, uh, filming this for Matt's Place today. You can see in the background here behind me, I've got some uh, Sammy Hagar chicken foot Van Halen with Sammy Hagar. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about today, sort of. This episode is me going through my Montrose collection. Now, some people out there know exactly who I'm talking about. Some are like, who's Montrose? Well, Montrose is named after guitarist Ronnie Montrose, who sadly uh, passed away five years ago. But he's got a new album out. Funny how that happens. And uh, my story with Montrose is basically that of being into Van Halen when Sammy Hagar joined and really getting into music at that period and then wanting to know what came before. And part of going back into the Hagar back catalog, I think I discussed this in my very first Van Halen vinyl episode where I go through everything, Van Halen, Sammy, and Dave. And Sammy's first recording group was Montrose. He did two albums with them. The first album is generally considered to be a hard rock classic and one of the first examples of American heavy metal, even though it's not metal by today's standards. So we'll get started with the, uh, the, the very thing that I first picked up after getting a few of Sammy's albums, inevitably the live albums, he would be doing Montrose songs on them like Space Station Number no. 5 and Bad Motor Scooter. So I picked this up. This is the first Montrose album on cassettes from 1973. It's on Warner Brothers. And this is one of those critically acclaimed albums that I think actually lives up to his hype for a lot of reasons. The material on it is very strong and the production is phenomenal. There are a couple tracks in particular, um, Rock Candy, which is probably the best known song from the album, and also the closing song, Make It Last. The drums are so full they're not unlike Eric Carr's drum sound on Creatures of the Night, and this is 1973. I don't think I'm wrong in saying it's the best produced album to come out in that time period. It sounded way ahead of its time. Unfortunately, um, the most important thing is that I had the album. The album was a little shy on information. So, I'll go over who these guys are. On the far left is drummer Denny Carmassi, who went on to uh, play in Sammy's solo band. He also joined Heart during their resurgence in the 80s. He also played on the Coverdale Page album. So good, like all around journeyman drummer. Bass player Bill Church, nickname Electric, Electric Church, who went on to, again, play with Sammy solo band. The man himself, Ronnie Montrose, the namesake of the band, and a very young Sammy Hagar on the far right. And this album, like I said, so ahead of its time. I don't want to belabor the point, but it really is one that lives up to its hype. Produced, Oddly enough, by Ted Templeman. So here we have a hard rock band named after the guitar player on Warner Brothers Records produced by Ted Templeman. The very template that five years later would yield results for no less than Van Halen. As a matter of fact, the young Van Halen starting out in the clubs played, I think, Make It Last and maybe one other song from here. And of all the bootlegs that have surfaced of early Van Halen playing in clubs, I've unfortunately never caught one of David Lee Roth singing a Sammy Hagar song, but that's another story. <laughs> so originally I had the cassette, and uh, that's all that I had. Eventually I found it on vinyl. Doesn't exactly scream hard rock album, I realize that, but don't let that throw you if you've never checked this out. Even, I will say this, even if you claim up and down you're not a Sammy Hagar fan, you don't like him in Van Halen, I've heard this a lot, most people generally agree this is a classic album. So this is a Canadian edition of the first Montrose album I've got here. I'm saying it's, I'm going to guess it was an early 80s reissue because it's got that maple leaf up there. We'll look inside, see what was in here. Now the version I have doesn't have any credits. It's got this Warner Brothers logo on it again, which is not what Warner Brothers records looked like at that time. So this is obviously a reissue. Also got it on CD here. This is a Canadian CD. I've had this for a while. It's the standard eight tracks on here. Uh, we'll flip this over, same picture that's on the back cover. And that's what the disc looks like, and not a lot inside, but a little bit. So which tells me there was probably a paper sleeve that originally came with the vinyl. And I'm actually doing something I don't do very often. I'm actually giving this up. <laughs> So it's now part of Matt's CD collection, so he can see what I've been gathering about all these years. Thanks, dude. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I just picked this up. This is a 2017 reissue of the debut Montrose album 
on Rhino Records, of course, does great job at reissues. Much better printing, I can tell you that yeah. right now. Yeah, a lot better printing. This has got some four demos, including Shoot Us Down, which has never appeared on any album. Uh, then a radio session from KSAN from April 21st, 1973, which has some other songs that never okay. appeared. So this is some, uh, even if you're just a Hagar fan, it's some Hagar that's never been heard before. So no question, this would have some, uh, some packaging that was not the original album. So there's a photo of the band and the, the discs are made up to look like of the era, the Burbank Warner Brothers mm -hmm. Palm Tree label. So here we go. So disc one, disc two. I guess we've already kind of gone over what was on there, and a lengthy write-up about this classic rock album. Um, yeah, it uh, basically tells the story of Montrose. It was short-lived with Hagar. Ronnie Montrose and Sammy Hagar did not get along very well, as singers and guitar players often don't. So um, that only lasted for one more album, and it's funny because the Montrose album I would see quite a lot once I got it and knew what it looked like. Uh, I'd always knew that there was a second album with Sammy, could never find it. I didn't find it until 1991 on cassette originally, which I don't have anymore. But this is the second Montrose album and the final one with Sammy. It's called Paper Money. It came out in 1974. Right away you can see that there's not a lot going on here. Um, <laughs> this album just doesn't have the spark that was on that first album. The production, even though it's still Ted Templeman, Ronnie Montrose had a bit bigger hand in it, and it sounds like it's from 1974. Whereas the first one doesn't, I don't think. It's just not as well produced, although there are a couple of uh, really good songs in here. I've Got the Fire, that's been covered by a number of people. Uh, Iron Maiden, uh, for one, did it as a B-side, and the title song, Paper Money. Those are generally the songs thought to be the ones that were of the quality that appeared of the material that appeared in the first album. This is a very scratched album, so I'm not very gentle with it because it's got a great, great big scratches on it. You don't see this one on vinyl that much. This one is definitely not a reissue because it is the Burbank Warner Brothers logo. And eventually I did manage to track it down on CD. So this is a relatively new, like probably mid 90s issue of Paper Money on Warner Brothers. A little bit of a write up on the album as the early Warner Brothers CDs did. But there's just not there's just not as much to get excited about with this album. But of course, it's still Sammy Hagar, so I had to have it. And, and again, there is some quality material on here. And basically, that was it for my Montrose collection. And I always thought that was going to be it. But uh, recently, a new Montrose album came out, new slash old. We'll get to that in a second. So I thought, well, maybe there's a catalog here. Maybe there's some material I've missed by by just kind of you know coming to a hard stop when. Sammy Hagar left to do a solo career. So I picked this CD up, which originally came out in 2000. This is another Rhino CD. It's called The Very Best of Montrose. This has 18 songs on it. Uh, first four are from the debut album. Second, the next four are from Paper Money. After that, it's uncharted territory for me. So there were 10 songs on here I'd never heard before from the albums Warner Brothers Presents Montrose from 75 and Jump On It from 1976. Those are the last two band albums done at Warner Brothers. And then again, it skips ahead to 1987 when he formed a completely different group and did an album on Enigma Records called Mean. And we'll, um, we'll take a look at the, uh, the credits here and then talk about the songs on it a little bit. So some various uh, pictures of the lineups that came and went. After Sammy Hagar left for the next two albums, the singer was a guy named Bob James, good enough singer. Uh, didn't really have the distinctive voice. There's some really weird guitars here. Ronnie Montrose played some uh, some interesting looking guitars. He had one that had a gun sight on it. Um, and there's there's a write-up about each one of the songs on here. And there's actually some really good material on here. It's just that there's not as much personality um, to separate it from a lot of other 70s rock. Now the last three songs are from this Mean album, which is the big M here. And one of them, M for Machine, I came to find out, was actually written for the first Robocop movie. So that's kind of an interesting talking point, and it sounds like it could have been as well. And his lineup included uh, musicians from a group that was called Buster Brown that he was actually producing. I found all this out here. Martin Popoff does a good write-up on, on uh, Ronnie's career as a band leader. Um, Buster Brown consisted of, among other people, James Kodak, who was a drummer who was in Kingdom Come. He was in Warrant. Um, he is currently in 
no, I don't think he's in Scorpions anymore. He, he kind of kicked out. But anyway, he's been in a lot of different bands. And a singer named Johnny Edwards, who went on to replace Lou Graham and Foreigner, but just for one album. So that kind of uh, made me think, maybe there's some more to check out from Montrose. We'll see how that goes. I'm not particularly interested in his solo albums, because I think they go far beyond the, the hard rock realm. But the newest thing is this. This just came out not too long ago. It's called 10 by 10, Ronnie Montrose featuring Ricky Phillips and Eric Singer. Now, I'd forgotten about this. In the early 2000s, before Eric Singer became a full-time member of KISS again, he was touring with Alice, but he and Ricky Phillips, Ricky Phillips is the bass player in Styx. He was also the bass player on the Coverdale Page album, so these musicians just kind of keep coming around. Uh, they had a trio with Ronnie Montrose, and they were working on new material. And sadly, uh, Ronnie Montrose, while well, he was not a, a fast worker, he believed in taking his time. Unfortunately, um, in 2012, he passed away. But his widow, Lisa, wanted Ricky and Eric to finish this album. In order to finish the album, they needed singers. So I'm going to read the song titles and the guest musicians that play on here, at least the singers and guitar players. So the first track's probably my favorite, Heavy Traffic, vocals by Eric Martin of Mr. Big, lead guitar by Dave Menichetti of Y&T. Now Dave um, has been compared to Sammy Hager as a vocalist. Unfortunately, he doesn't sing on this track, but when Sammy did his uh, Four Decades of Rock tour, when they would do the Montrose set, of course, Ronnie wasn't there, Dave stood in when they did Rock Candy, uh, you know, the Montrose songs. So I really like that one. Uh, Love is an Art, Track two, not crazy about this one. This one features Edgar Winter and Rick Derringer. Not really into that one so much. Colorblind, this is the one that Sammy Hagar sings on, and it's a great track. Uh, lead guitar by Steve Lukather of Toto. Next one's another good song, Still Singing with the Band. Uh, this one is fun because the lyrics reference a bunch of Montrose song titles. Lead vocals by Glenn Hughes, and lead guitar by Def Leppard's Phil Collin. Number five, Strong Enough, Tommy Shaw is on this one, I'm assuming on vocals and guitar. Track six is called Any Minute. I remember first hearing this thinking, I know that voice, but I can't place it. It's Mark Farner, formerly of Grand Funk Railroad. Now, of course, Grand Funk Railroad, lead guitarist by Bruce Kulick, who was a former bandmate of Eric Singer. Uh, next up, The Kingdom's Come Undone, Ricky Phillips on bass and vocals and guitar by Joe Bonamassa. Uh, track eight, One Good Reason, Bruce Turgon is the bassist and singer on this one. Bruce is a member of Foreigner. I didn't realize he could sing. He's not a bad singer. And Brad Woodford from Aerosmith provides lead guitar on this. Uh, number nine, Head On Straight. Davey Pattison does the lead vocal on this one. He was the singer in Ronnie's late 80s, or late 70s, early 80s band Gamma. Uh, Mark Bonilla is the other listed player. I'm not familiar with that name, unfortunately. And the last one is a slow blues one called I'm Not Lying. Uh, vocals by Greg Raleigh, formerly of Journey and Santana. Hadn't heard him sing vo vocal on an album in a long time. It didn't. I didn't quite catch it at first that it was Greg, but once you listen, it is. Tom Gimble, who's keyboard player for Aerosmith, and Lawrence Gowan, who is a member of Styx, and of course in Canada, he's a solo star in his own right. So, all-star, um, you know, performances on here. That's a picture of Ronnie. And varying, you know, my my. Varying uh, enjoyment of the tracks, although I'm, it hasn't been out too long, so I'm still really getting into it. I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure my favorites will remain, uh, the songs with Sammy Hagar and also Eric Martin and Dave Menachetti. But uh, sad, his story is a sad one at the end, but left some great music behind, and, and there's probably more music for me to check out. I'm particularly interested in checking out the the three band albums that he did after Sammy Hagar left. So there's there's more to check out here. And if anybody out there is a fan of Ronnie Montrose in general as a performer, uh, let me know. Recommend something for me. And thank you for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions.